watched the Comedy Store documentary um, a few weeks ago, and it's really good, really, really good documentary. I kind of definitely understood a, a main reason why a lot of those people that I kind of listened to in the LA comedy scene, you know, suck that store off so much. It really makes sense what you watch documentary. It's very well done. If not, maybe a little bit. It's a, it's maybe a little. It's maybe references too many celebrities and whatever there may be. It probably doesn't um, speak too much to the contemporary side or the modern day in incarnation of the comedy store, but it does basically lay out a good timeline of its inception, its rise, its sort of fall, its rise again, and basically where it's at at the moment. Because I think the last episode is it's basically them sitting around and talking about how they've basically dealt with comedy during COVID time. So it's pretty interesting. And they've got everyone on there, right? Everyone that you kind of associate with the comedy store. Um, watching it though, one specific thing stood out, especially from episode four onwards, was the story about Carlos Mencia and the whole issue about him being a joke thief at the comedy store the kind of confrontation that he had with Joe Rogan that eventually left to a big rift in the store and Joe Rogan essentially quitting and the store picking Carlos Mencia over him and that kind of causing a rift in the scene a rift so much that 15 14 years later down the line there's still a little bit of tension behind the scenes regarding what happened and of course Carlos Mencia is not featured in the documentary which is an interesting creative interesting production choice i guess or whatever that you call that right interesting because in the documentary no spoiler alert the guy who does it he's basically an old comic who kind of quit and decided to do um, directing instead and he's a very um, accomplished director in his own regard um he he does interview people like louis ck right which is interesting because you know louis ck has kind of got cancelled so he included him in there which was great to see i would have liked to have seen someone like a chris Delia in a documentary as well i think he's um he kind of represents another era another stage of the of the documentary but i understand at the time it was being made maybe it was just too hot of a time but it would have been great to include him in there um but the one thing that i was surprised about was that you know throughout the entire episode where they speak about the whole issue about Carlos Mencia and seeing jokes and the joe rogan fallout there wasn't really any mention about Carlos Mencia's side of things they played a little clip of Carlos Mencia kind of quasi defending himself on a mark Marin podcast one of his catalog of car crash interviews but he never actually appeared in the show himself and i kind of watched it thinking you know what i bet you wherever this guy is he's going to be really annoyed about this isn't it because you know he's he's never seemed very remorseful throughout the entire process of the time you've heard people speaking about on different shows about how much it kind of drew a rift in the scene and it made people you know relationships got ruined from it but whenever you heard cosman sia speak about the issue he doesn't really seem that remorseful if anything he he kind of avoids apologizing he does that kind of narcissistic um psychopathic thing where he kind of deflects everything and inadvertently makes it all about himself and tries to make you feel sorry for his position just a really strange manipulative kind of behavior so that kind of happened right and then luckily the other day guess what happened oddly enough tiger belly bobby lee's podcast with kalila he decided to get Carlos Mencia on his show to interview him and basically to speak to him about that whole issue and kind of have a bit of an intervention and guess what it didn't work he is exactly the same as you have would have guessed from all the other shows he's done prior he's still unrepentful he's still trying to make excuses for whatever he done and i think once you watch the comedy stock documentary and once you kind of get yourself up to speed with the sort of the unofficial history from some of the other comedians if you've been listening to some of the podcast you will understand that a lot of the reasons why he kind of got excommunicated even though he thinks he didn't do anything wrong and he didn't steal da, 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 is basically because he is a terrible person forget the joke stealing i think the joke stealing was kind of the thing that pushed people over the edge but i think in general as a human he seemed to be a really bad guy and everyone was happy and and kind of glad that joe sort of stood up for them all um in terms of the joke stealing stuff and basically said hey enough is enough you're ruining this place and eventually he did ruin it it kind of died a slow death and it kind of went where he went to but that being said put to one side the actual interview itself with bobby lee and kalila is fascinating to watch with carlos mencia i'm going to play a, a bit of the clip that i kind of pulled out of the stuff that i thought was interesting essentially he's unrepentful he kind of makes excuses and again it's a it's a bit of a hard one to kind of get through because you know it's kind of 
cringy and you kind of feel embarrassed for him that he's still making excuses now and he still doesn't see the error of his ways but you really have to commend Bobby Lee for trying his best to try and kind of help his friend somebody that he kind of considers as a friend because you know Bobby Lee always speaks very highly of Carlos Mencia he's the one that kind of gave him a shot brought him on a road he kind of owes a lot to him and he also kind of feels guilty because he also jumped ship when everyone kind of you know distances off of Carlos Mencia he also kind of jumped on the winning team but you know he's been fairly honest about being a little bit of a um of a wimp in that regard and not really standing up for people in that instance which is fine but i think he was went out of his way to be like you know what let me try and rectify this issue and get him back in the fold because from what you realize watching a comedy store documentary comedians really really value the relationships they have with their peers it's one of the biggest things you hear them mention it all the time like he or, he or she killed on the stage but they always speak about the giggles they heard behind the curtains the giggles they heard in the green room making so-and-so comedian laugh that person coming up to them and saying you did a great set they really really value that so for bobby lee to decide to bring him on the show it was kind of his way of saying that hey i know you're out there in the wilderness on your own and to do this comedy thing you need to be around other comedians this is the only way this makes it fun there's no point of doing this thing if you're just going to be on your own with no friends and you know Carlos Mencia just doesn't take it he just kind of sits there makes excuses dunks all over the place Kalila tries to come in and it's funny because I guess Bobby Lee starts off a bit softly softly and then it doesn't work to kind of get him to maybe admit his wrongs and apologize then Kalila tries her softly softly approach that doesn't work either and then Bobby Lee tries to be a bit direct about it and that still doesn't work it's a complete horror show but let me just play for you a clip that I thought was pretty illuminating as to the entire issue it should be around 47 minutes about here where is it about there yeah, let's play from here there you go this is Cosman C on a Tiger Belly podcast episode number 279 Something that I would say after I told them, I'd rather watch you bomb doing no shit right now. Mm. Because then I know you're trying something. Because I already know you're funny. You already know you're funny. You're killing with this other set. Now write something different, better, greater. Like come up with something. Yeah. So it was always a It's funny. Look at Bobby Lee's face. Like he's a pretty cool dude, man, but he had the same face for the entire podcast. Like whenever they were talking and he's obviously trying to, you know, speak about comedy and be normal, but it's like, look, this is just an elephant in the room, you know? about trying to trying to help out but it, it didn't always it didn't always work out <laughs> yeah, <that yeah>. <laughs> um so so how are you feeling now with all this, the the controversy that happened a decade ago i mean what's what's going on now 14 years ago now 14 yeah. years ago yeah uh see dude back in those days well first of all you know what dude everything it's it hit me uh, when I watched the episode, that episode of, of the comedy store. Yeah, this as soon as this happened, I already knew he was going to talk a lot of bullshit because you'd imagine at this point, someone would just say, you know, how, how, how do you been feeling being like kind of abandoned by your entire community and ostracized and labeled as a joke thief? And basically, you know, this kind of, it's essentially being labeled as a scum of the earth. You'd be like, you know what? It's been really difficult, I have to be honest. I've had some really dark times, but I just want to take this opportunity to just apologize to everybody that I kind of hurt along the way. I don't know how much, you don't know how sorry I am for the stuff that I've done and whatever I can do to kind of get back to your good graces, I will do it, but I'm so, so sorry for everything that I've done. And it really hit, it really hit me when I watched the episode of the Comedy Store of the damage that I caused in the community. And I don't want everyone to think that I'm a bad guy. I really want to come make amends. That's what someone would say, but look what he says. A showtime thing. Yeah. It hit me because you texted me. I realized I like my absence from my internet in all those years allowed a narrative to be created that will never change. Me, no me, what I me, do, me, me, no me, me. No matter what I say, no matter how I come about it, no matter what my perspective is, um, it, it just is the way it is. Like there's nothing I could do about it. And that that is a very uh, difficult thing to do for somebody who is a control freak like me look at who as you know me? i'm always thinking about me if i do this then that then what are the ramifications I? of all this stuff mm -hmm. so my my biggest regret is back in those days you know when when all this stuff happened was to to fight it not fight it but to like i've recorded all my shows since 1993 yeah. i don't have to fight anybody on excuses I if know. somebody comes up to me and says hey you're doing my joke i could easily go what joke is it when did you tell it let me go look and then if you did it before me I'm, I'll stop doing it or whatever it is see he nearly said I'm sorry but he said I'll stop doing it whatever 
that isn't whatever that's probably one of the biggest crimes that you could ever do in stand-up comedy is copy somebody else's act that's it right there's a lot of comments here about you know hear people talking bad about hannah gasway and this type of people because you know admitted admittedly you know objectively it's not comedy it's not very funny or you look at stuff that some of the stuff that these tiktok people do whatever you can say hey it's not my kind of comedy but there's no denying that they're kind of creating their own content. It might not be great. It might be regurgitated. It might be a bit hacky, but at least they're making their own content. They're going out of their way to film bits, edit it, put it together, upload it. But when you just sat there, especially prior to the internet, right? Prior to social media picking off and you're kind of exploiting and taking advantage of people because especially imagine, imagine back then when having a TV deal, having a name on the marquee, industry friends, all this stuff was super important. So you were basically, put on a pedestal and exalted probably higher to a higher level than your actually talent permitted it right because there was no other avenue to be famous or to have a how to have any meaningful success in the industry so he took advantage of that stole people's jokes more so stole openers people that he was kind of you know uh quote-unquote grooming people that were kind of new in the industry taking their jokes people that have just kind of getting their feet um under the table and then now years later he still doesn't see the error of his ways like I've always had that, yeah. But, but the, I stayed quiet, and it just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And now, it's just like that's what it is. I mean, I guarantee you that when this airs, if you go on to the comments, people are gonna say, "Why'd you put that stealing piece of shit on?" All this kind of stuff, whatever it is. And no matter what I say, but why not? It's but Ned, why not do in the beginning? Um, just a blanket apology but i wasn't see let me get this understand understand what happened anytime again there's no need to say anything here someone's telling you a comedian within your a fellow peer someone you respect somebody who has the ear and the voice of everybody else that's around you that probably would be upset it's kind of telling you via proxy that hey the things that you did were so fucked up that people are still annoyed at you now. Why don't you just apologize and get over it? Because people are over it, but they want to hear you say sorry. They want to they want to hear you admit that you did wrong. And he's still making excuses. And if again, if you do your research, there's nothing really to excuse about this. Like maybe he might have a he might have a point to be made about should it have been done that way on the stage blah 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 i don't know whatever he could have some point around that it was bullying mob mentality whatever but the core of the issue was that he was stealing jokes joe rogan's finally stood up for the comedians who felt like they were being you know wrong they were getting bumped as well as the other thing too that he doesn't mention he was bumping people left right and center and then he kind of got a lot of satisfaction he said out of it because people did it to him so he felt um he felt obliged to do it to the next generation of people coming up, which is the most shittiest thing to do. You would imagine, really, the worse you were treated coming up, the more likely you are to be nicer and kinder to the people coming up behind you because you don't want them to repeat the same mistakes. You don't want them to go through what you had went through on, on your way up. And he's still being an entirely, entirely terrible person. And again, you'll get more perspective from this, watching the documentary and also watching the clip itself that I think Brian Redband filmed when it actually first happened. Time. even to this day bro yeah somebody says you stole a joke i go okay well what joke was it not angry like what joke dude i write a lot you know this i fucking create I, a lot of material i'm so a genius lot. you've seen me i've got a big brain you personally have seen me write. i'm really good at comedy minutes of new shit on stage in one show I, I i i have seen that but i have also seen um some of your act you know what i mean a little too close to things that have already been established like 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 the bill cosby bit yeah i'd never seen that one so i know but i know my, my point though is is that it's so similar right yeah yeah that um why not just outwardly say i apologize and then we could just move on from it rather than you what, what is that like a psychopath thing that kind of lack of emotion because he's not very this is sort of like his career's in tatters, right? He's been basically excommunicated from the comedy scene. He's been, this is the, probably the biggest platform he's been on since the Mark Maron show. I don't think anyone, who else had him on? Was it Joey Diaz maybe had him on? I don't know who else had him on, but he hasn't really been involved in any prominent LA podcast since the Mark Maron show. And that was a bit of a train wreck. 
So you'd imagine after all this time with COVID, people are a bit emotional, right? You're reaching out to old friends. You want to reconnect with people that you've, you know, lost contact with. If you've lost contact with me, don't reconnect with me. I don't give a shit about you. Drop it and die. But you'd imagine people being a little bit more emotional in that regard, that you'd be a little bit more understanding and maybe a little bit more empathetic, em empath empathetic, 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 whatever that word is. And you just want to maybe turn a new leaf. You'd want to be welcomed back into the fold, but no, he's not. Defending. But it's not that I'm defending. See, again, it, it's not that I'm defending. I just, who do I apologize to? Everyone you heard. So, you, so really quick, really quick. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm not. And he did that a lot, by the way, interrupting everybody. And you see Bobby Lee's eyes there. Look at that. <laughs> you and I hung out. We, we never watched comedy shows. There was no Netflix to watch it. It was nothing. And you never heard me talk about Bill Cosby. And yeah, my yeah, style but, of comedy but, is but, nothing yeah, like it. No, no, hold okay. on. Let me tell you a story. So. When we recorded that special, on the second recording, I did that bit. At the end of the show, Jeff Schimmel, Robert Schimmel's brother, came up to me and said, yo, that bit sounds very similar to a bit that What's McCall does. And I said, fuck, I'm tired of this shit. What's the McCall it does? He doesn't even say his name. But you guys deal with it the way you need to deal with it. From the minute he told me that, I've never done that joke ever since. We can go through the archives of my performances. I could take you and you could pull out any performance. This I is such a backward justification. Just because you have the record of every set you've done and you can show evidence that you've never repeated the same joke that you've taken of somebody else when you got called out isn't evidence that you're a good person. It's just evidence that you, when you get called out, you stop telling the joke. Like, bullshit guy. Anyway, it's continued. Another side of the clip that I thought was very illuminating was when Kalila tried to get involved and ask him a question. This was around, what was this? Da, 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 da. This was around 123. Let's scroll through here. 123. It's about here. Yep, there you go. Let's go back here. 123. But I can, you know, look, when you're following the 12 step program, which you know well, when it comes time to apologizing, you have to apologize to the people that you hurt. Correct. You can't just give a blanket statement and say, I was a drunk and I was an addict and while I did that, I hurt some people. No, you have to call those fucking people. You have to talk to those people. You have to look at those people in the eye and say, I agree. I'm sorry that I did that to you. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. That's what I've always wanted to be able to have that catharsis for myself. Me, me. On behalf of, of me. Me. Yeah. To say to those guys, like, dude, I never knew that I did that. I'm so fucking sorry. How can I make it up to you? What are you doing right now in your career? Do you want to open for me? Do you want to do some tour dates? This guy's ego is out of the world. Who wants to open for Carlos Mencia in 2020 going forward? Who would want to do that? Do to help, you know what I mean? I don't have a TV show, but you know what I mean? I'm still fucking doing the road. I still do the numbers. You I know, love we're that. Still doing, like I would, but I, I, love I never get that. And, and I wish that I did. And so a, a hypothetical apology, I don't have a problem with it. It feels fake. Mm. Not to me, <laughs> but to, to them. That's always felt fake until I, now. Because now I realize that to a lot of people, I am that and that's all I am. And no matter what I say, no matter what I do. And also he looks like that's pure, what utter dog shit, doesn't he? Objectively speaking, right? The triple chin... He looks very bloated, like he's been drinking every single day of his life um, since that occasion. He looks lonely, detached from reality, deluded. Like, there's a quote in that Carlos Mintz, there's a quote in the Comedy Store documentary that really stood out to me, where Joe Rogan says something like, um, I think he's on one of those Comedy Store shows, I think with one of the guy that kind of dresses up in wacky suits. And he says something like, oh, joke stealing is one of the most you know obviously abhorrent things that you can do in comedy but it's also the curse of all curses that you're going up on stage doing other people's jokes and you know deep down that that's not your material you know you didn't write it and you know the moment you're gonna you get called out you're gonna have to make new material but you haven't practiced making new material because you keep stealing that's basically the the that is what what do you say it was that the, that's like the curse of all curses or something along that line as joe rogan said and it is the curse of all curses that now Carlos Mencia, who was, you know, at first, cho he was the one, people picked his side because he was the popping comedian at the time. Joe Rogan was ostracized. Then the tables get flipped. Joe Rogan becomes the living embodiment of the comedy store. He's flying that banner left and right. He's a, a big advocate of Missy Shaw and the work that she did there. 
he's providing a platform he makes the joe rogan podcast which then becomes joe rogan experience sorry becomes a platform to showcase some comedians whether they be established underground on the way up regardless of AV. it then becomes the biggest platform outside of netflix to showcase your talent and to showcase you know your ability to be funny and whatever it may be and then the person that was on top in Cosmos C is completely ostracized on the outside looking in how the tables have turned if again don't believe in karma too much because i think some people just you know are terrible and they get away with it they live a nice and free life conscious free they go to bed like a baby um you know even though they you know put tons of pollutants in people's water and you know effectively wipe out a complete generation of a family they don't really have any they don't really have any consciousness in that regard some people are like that but he definitely has some level of karmic um you know effects have been felt in his life looking at him in general and how he's basically conducting himself in this interview well fuck those people but it's diff it's difficult because i don't i don't have a problem with you suck you're you ain't shit da, 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 doesn't matter there is no comeback for whose jokes are you telling now what jokes did you do oh you wrote a new joke like there's no comeback for that you can't you should get i can't say anything to that all I have to, I, all I can do is read it and try to let it not break my heart, mm. crack my soul, you know? But I, in my mind, and maybe I'm not seeing the whole picture, but in my mind. And, I... and again, if I, I fast forward a few minutes, but look how quiet Bobby Lee is. In the beginning of the show, he's super chatty. He's bubbling. They're making, you know, you can see his face here in the corner of the screen. He's really engaging. He's trying to, you know, he's trying to help out his friend. And by the middle, he realizes it's like talking to a brick wall. You know, he's got his arms crossed, he's crossed his legs, defensive position. He's looking down, not looking at um, Carlsman Sia. He's completely tapped out. He's realized that this guy is way beyond the pale. He's finished, he's done, it's over for him, it's a wrap. But it's sad to see, of course, because it's your friend and he can't be reasoned with. And Kalila, bless her, is still trying. And this is probably the only podcast, I think, outside of the one that Kalila started crying because she felt ashamed that she wasn't black or something, remember, during the whole uh, Black Lives Matter thing? process are happening in the stage and she started sobbing this is probably the only podcast i've seen outside of that that's got this many dislikes 5.3 um up votes and 1.2 down votes the only one see the cast been see effect redemption for you and i believe in it so strongly and i think that the where it starts is like you said individually apologizing but doing both doing the blanket statement anyways whether you think it's genuine or not how it lands on people is 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 we can't control that but doing both doing the blanket mm -hmm. and then doing yeah. this and then i see somebody that i grew up with making amends who i know is an amazing performer and i want to see him up on stage again in in the way that he deserves yeah i don't have control over that like i said i you know i've i've called individuals to apologize i've called them to say you know sorry i bumped you sorry i did that you know what i mean the caparillos of the world mm. you know but then again bobby will tell you i never went on stage at the time i was supposed to in the first few years of my career <sighs> anyway this is this is when he gets a little bit ridiculous he starts to make excuses and argue that he was also disadvantaged coming up it's a horrendous interview to car crash tv but again um recommend you check it out um check out the comedy store documentary too um carlos mancia it feels like his career is completely finished if it wasn't before then it definitely is now um i don't think anyone's going to get any sympathy from this at all he basically painted himself out to be an even a much a, a, a way more how did yeah he, he made himself look worse if that's possible 14 years later which is a very rare talent so big up him and regardless and then big up Kalila and bobby lee too for trying to help out their friend but again he's finished he's beyond the pale he's gone he's unreachable it's over it's done um but again let me know in the comments what do you think do you think cars can can come back i don't think so i think cars is done out here um but maybe he can make a comeback in your eyes let me know in the comments down below i'd love to hear your opinions